human nature is such that we have a tendency to seek out technological solutions and sometimes in our drive and our excitement with the technological solution we can sometimes lose the fundamental basis. About 15 years after the uh, first use of DNA in forensic science, there was the realisation that DNA could be um, transferred onto surfaces and detected. And that really spawned a whole industry and um, interest in seeing where we could detect DNA and how we could detect DNA that may have lost sight of the fact that the DNA is not uh, particular about where and when it transfers. And because the DNA is so powerful, this is this is in itself a risk because everybody can become so excited about probing the technology that they forget that actually maybe this sample wasn't relevant at all. So we need to be particularly careful. This, this um, information is so powerful that we need to be really confident and careful and sure that it's relevant to the event that we're investigating. And because of that, um, it's my contention that what we should be doing with forensic science is looking at a coherent narrative. It's, it shouldn't be that one sample in isolation solves the case. And in my experience, you asked me earlier on about my experience in forensic science, and I had a lot of dealings with our uh, police investigators um, and with our prosecutors indeed. And maybe it's the same everywhere, but no um, sound prosecution is based on one finding, no matter how fantastic that finding is. We, we certainly shouldn't stop using DNA, one of the most powerful tools available to us in crime investigation. Maybe we need um, to pay more attention on a case basis rather than a sample um, basis and to think of the uh, totality of the case and the context of the case um, because we, we do need to mitigate these risks but we couldn't possibly uh, not um, get value from this amazing um, tool in crime investigation.